so the topic for today is a little bit about Microsoft 365. And it's using the combination of two of the apps. They're part of the ecosystem of Microsoft 365, which is Microsoft Forms and Microsoft Power BI. And I find that when I'm working with this platform, with this ecosystem, that without realizing that I'm using probably a handful of apps, not just the two specific that uh, we're mentioning right here. It's just the extraordinary opportunity to let everybody know that earlier this morning, I'm on the East coast here in, I know we might have someone from Canada, Jamaica, uh, South Bury, Washington state, Florida. I had a meeting with someone in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, we're, <laughs> it's easy for us to figure things out because it's a half day difference. So it was about nine o'clock, eight thirty, nine o'clock for me in the morning. And it was eight thirty nine into the PM for Ulaanbaatar. And a good chance they might be joining us for in the next month or two for one of these meetings, because I got them started with looking into TechSoup Connect and they are registered. So that's fantastic. And I recommended to this individual who works with Children's Hope Mongolia to make sure they take advantage of Microsoft 365. All right. So let's just spend a minute or two on that. And you can locate these materials on a share area that is, let's see, Valerie, I'm going to try to type it in and ask if you would test it. It's sure. HTTPS colon mm -hmm. slash tiny URL. And I'm typing it in tiny URL dot okay. com slash TSC for TBO. All right. And if you wish uh, to click on that, it will take you to, let me slide this over here. And then if you click gotcha. on the last modified by, you'll see this is my East Coast time. I put four files there. I, there's the PowerPoint, there's a Power BI file. Now, of course, you, you may need to have that installed from the Microsoft store. So if people have questions about that, please ask. And there's two PDF files there with, they're all small, just a couple of pages or sl so the slides are in the PowerPoint or the PDF. It's the same thing. And the PBIX file that I'm going to walk through with you. Maybe that you never heard of it before. We're going to talk a little bit about what a PBIX file is. The, the pages from that were exported to a PDF file that I'm calling screen for DI. And you'll realize why I decided to give it that name as we go through with this. So anybody interested? Those are the, uh, things, the files, the information that we're working with. So now let's, let me get that out of the way. All right. Okay. So Microsoft 365 from TechSoup, why is that a spectacularly attractive offer to any nonprofit? It's because there is no cost. It's from the Microsoft philanthropy made available either directly through the Microsoft philanthropy. Or if you're registered with TechSoup, if you're a community nonprofit organization in just about any part of the world, there is through TechSoup Global, there is a site that you can work through. And I verified that with the person I was speaking with this morning, the director of development with Children's Hope Mongolia, and we went to TechSoup Global, we looked up Mongolia and we went into the Microsoft opportunities and you can uh, register to receive that and you'll receive 10, I think it's nine or 10 free Microsoft 365 business premium accounts 
which are, that's here, it's described down here. So if you could see that. So I'm going to recommend that if you do not already have that and you think you might like it, that's, that's the place to go to. Okay. All right. Any questions on that? All right. Everybody's good with that. Yeah. Thank you for telling us about Mongolia on TechSoup, Val. Does everybody have uh, a TechSoup account? I assume we've got a small group here. Please participate in the chat if that's convenient and, and let us know. Okay. Fantastic. And then, so you most likely know about Microsoft 365. Fantastic. All right. So let's see what, what's going on here with forms. Okay. So I'm going to make this, now I'm on a monitor here that Val, is this easy to see? Is it the proportions coming through? Okay. And looks all right. They are um, looking at this from an iPad with a split screen. <laughs> no, even with a split screen, it's coming through clearly. You're good. Okay. Super duper. Thank you so much. All right. And all right. So I want to make this like really straightforward. There's not a lot of stuff to memorize or think through. As I uh, already uh, pointed out, the, the small set of slides or files is available at this location. All right. So let's look at a form. Now, if you want to have some fun, you can uh, you know, have some fun. Here's the link to a form that we're going to use for this session. Okay. And I'm using tiny URL to make the short URL for this longer one up here. So it's tinyurl.com demo 329. If you click on that, I think I have to press my control. Is that right? I think I'm just going to copy it. I know sometimes that doesn't work when I press, I'm on a external keyboard, but should work. I think I'm just going to type it in. Let's see, let's bring it over here and I'm going to type in, oh, I could put that in the chat for everybody, HTTPS, tinyurl.com slash, what is it called? Demo 329. Let's see, did I remember that the right way? Um, yep. So this is it. This is what will happen. Okay. So here's what I suggest, or at least this is how I work with getting started with the form. And I realize some of you may be using this already. You're experts with it. I'm going to just take you back to the basics. One of the things that I found handy, and I know that the features are always changing and there's new stuff coming in and old ways of doing things. You don't have to do it anymore. And sometimes they change their names, but what, what I do is in the, wherever you are on Microsoft 365, you're familiar perhaps with this waffle icon. That's the waffle. That's the hamburger. Somebody's having breakfast. I'll be having lunch. Ha ha ha. Okay. So we click on the app launcher and you can, you may locate forms right in there, or you can go to all apps since it's in there, I click on, so I assume it's called an ellipsis, whether it's vertical or horizontal, but the three dots, the ellipsis, and I'm going to open in a new tab. Now here's what I found made life just a little bit easier is that you can start a form right here. Seems logical to start a form, but what I found seemed to work a little bit better in terms of connecting with Microsoft Power BI is if I started the form in a group, in a Microsoft 365 group. So I've got a lot of groups in here, all right? And I chose this group, it's for my organization, and I created a file in there. Or I'm sorry, I created a form in there. And so you can see the form that we're using in the in the session today, I created this form as an, ex it's both an example 
And we had a session last fall about digital inclusion. And so that I used the ideas from digital inclusion to create a form. And so if you'd like to enter responses in the form as we're going through this session, you can do that by clicking on the link in the chat, which is the tinyurl.com forward slash demo 329. You can put your name, your dog's name, your favorite ice cream, just whatever you like. And you can put crazy answers or rational, logical answers or whatever you think is good to do. So I created it in here and that made it a little bit easier to locate or, or for at, rather for Power BI to connect to it. Okay. So we'll just look in the form here. It's a relatively simple form and I have uh, a question or an item for you to put your name or initials and I use this option. If you wanted to create another one, let me uh, refresh my memory of what's that called. It might be called a Likert, I guess. It's a Likert scale type of question item. So Microsoft Forms is a basic form tool. And of course, there are other more advanced and analytical types of forms. But Microsoft Forms is pretty a useful for doing some routine and basic things that for which you might like to collect. Okay. So the question came in is what is digital inclusion? Thank you for asking that question. That gives me an opportunity to put in, there is a digital inclusion website for the United. I think this is us based. Uh, so I'm going to put that in the, uh, chat area. So some nonprofits, my own included have a concern and interest for youth and community members to be digital and inc digitally included. So I'm go just going to give you the, the, the basic parameters of what constitutes digital inclusion so that any individual in the community can participate in the digital world. And so the. I'm not sure if this is globally used, but certainly in the United States that these five areas be addressed and so that an individual has access to the internet, that they have a device that they can use to connect to the internet on that device, whether it's a tablet, smartphone, computer, laptop. They have apps that are useful for them. Maybe that as they're learning and coming up to speed with using the device or learning digital literacy, that they have training available to them. A lot of times that's available through a public library. And of course we realize that not every individual has access to a public library. Maybe there's other ways, of course there's neighbors, friends online, and that there's an opportunity for finding support. If you need to make a repair or correction or get something working, that's no longer working. And so for everyone to participate in be included that all of those things would be available to them to some degree or another, whether they have to pay for it or whether there's free Wi-Fi available or public library. Hope that, uh, was a useful way of describing it. And of course, for lots more information about what's going on and there's legislation going on for digital broadband and you can find that you can get on a mailing list and I participate a little bit with the digital inclusion project in New Jersey. And that was a wonderful experience for me. So we're over here and let's just say we're going to put something in. So I'm going to put in the name Denny and in case anybody's wondering who Denny is, Denny's a, it's a beagle that was rescued from Pennsylvania and brought back into the neighborhood where I live and my family has beagles and the beagles have a new friend now. So 
I'm just going to put in some silly answers. I'm going to say, Denny's so new, he, he doesn't have his own device yet. So how could he have an app? He definitely wants some help with training and he needs lots of support. So we're going to help him out, show him the ropes, and I'm going to uh, submit that. Okay. So if you'd like to play along, you can also submit something in there. Okay. So what happens when that's submitted? It goes somewhere. So one of the things I like about using the, the forms in a group, and in this instance, I'm using this group on my organization's Microsoft 365 site. It, it goes to the shared documents library and it lands right here. So let's see if it's in there. Hopefully it's in there. And I know it was submitted by Denny. So I should see Denny's name somewhere. We got a couple of Denny's because I was practicing before and, and putting in and assuming this is, is refreshing that, that one that I just put in and we can check by the time here. Good chance it might be this one here, because that's about the time where it's just a minute later or not. Shannon put that one in. Thank you for, <laughs> and then here, Denny, that's right. Here's Denny's. Okay. So looks like Shannon, like you, you're, you've got good digital inclusion. So that's fantastic. Okay. So that goes in there. Now, it, when you're working with the forms, let's just look at the form it self again, you get some ways of looking at the responses and certainly take advantage of whatever it shows that Denny is a popular survey completer <laughs> with us. And you can see what each individual did. So this is certainly very useful in my work. I find that using power BI brings some things uh, like a step closer. And so what I did was I connected Microsoft Power BI. So this is where the form was. I showed you where the spreadsheet was that we, we looked at. Okay. And now I want to make a connection. And what this is showing here is this is the web address to where the file is that allows me to make a web connection into Microsoft Power BI. Now, when you do this a lot, it might seem surprising, but you can actually remember that. It may sound crazy if you're looking at this the first time and say, that's crazy, I can't remember that. But it, it, what your, your platform is, and you go to sites, and then you know what your site is, and then you, you, you add shared documents, and then you add the name. But no worries, you don't have to uh, uh, remember it. You can locate it, let's see, back over here, by opening the file. All right, so just going to open it in the app, in, which is Excel. Okay, so there you go. We're using another one of the apps on Microsoft 365. And every once in a while, I have to do this. And it's just, if you've never approached it this way, it's useful to be mindful and aware of how this works. So we just opened it and we had it open before and you click on file and you go to info and you click on copy path. Okay. And then I'll just to show you what you get when you do that, I'm just going to paste it in there and that's it. And then what you do at this point is you remove the rightmost six characters. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you're left with this nice clean web path to your data. And that's fantastic. So now wh what are we going to do with it now that we have it? Well, I'm just going to copy this in case I want to apply it again. And we go into Microsoft Power BI. So I've created this report from the data, 
But just to show you that it actually works, I'm going to connect to the data again. All right. And whoops, wrong, wrong link. I want to get data, of course. Okay. And there's a lot of different places where you can connect the data. And the point here is that we're keeping the work in the cloud, in the Microsoft cloud. We're, and so we're going to make a web connection. And you can certainly connect to an Excel workbook that you have access to maybe on a shared drive or a local drive. But for this scenario, I like to connect to the data with a, a web connection. And a lot of times I'll be connecting into SharePoint, which is also on the Microsoft platform or to, if it is spreadsheet data, that's collected with a form I'm using a web connector. Okay. So I'm just going to paste it in there and click. Okay. And if I've got a pretty good web connection, hopefully, uh, It'll bring in the table in the form. It may not matter which one we select. They seem to be identical. If anyone has a more refined understanding on the distinction between tables and forms in, in this use case of Power BI, please write something in the chat or put in a link or come off mute happy to understand that a little better. Typically I work with tables. I'm going to click the, the form here. Shannon is recommending a table. So let's see if I muck up the waters here with, with selecting form. And then I'm going to click transform data. You can load it or transform it. And I'm going to pull that over into the share screen. So I'm just going to pause here for a second. Okay. Thank you, Val, for your comment in there about the, about the table and, and form. Does, is everybody who's on our session, have you worked with Microsoft Power BI or is it uh, a new, okay. Shannon has, I know Valerie's a bit familiar with it. I know that Richard has seen it before. Okay. Uh, okay. Rosanna, uh, thank you. So happy to, I love sharing ideas and introducing people to Power BI. I've been working with it for, I don't know, four or five years or something. And I find it really super valuable and feel like I can't leave home without it. And Jeff, thanks for, for your comment. So let me just point out that I'm using a desktop application called Microsoft Power BI Desktop or Power BI Desktop. And some of the things I'm going to be showing you are in the Power BI service or Power BI. Some people might just say. And this is a uh, Power BI desktop. You, you can connect to data directly through the service. And that's certainly, and maybe we could check that out as well. That might be, work very nicely with the form. So we'll, we'll try that momentarily. If you do want to use Power BI desktop, you can click on the search area and go into the Microsoft, Microsoft store and click in there. Let me pull that over and do a, let's see, I'll go to apps and search for power BI and there's, you're going to get a couple of results here. So Power BI desktop is the one that I'm using. There's a report builder. It's a, I don't know, a little more specialized tool for Power BI. I have not worked. I'm familiar with it. I haven't worked with it. And then there's also another one that's a Power BI. It's like a viewer. 
and I, yeah, so I guess that's the one that's here. This is the Power BI viewer. That's the one that you would get if you were working with your smartphone or tablet. It's for viewing Power BI reports, but not for creating them. To create them, you need to work in a browser in, or I'm sorry, either work with Power BI desktop or the Power BI service in a browser. Okay, so we're here. I'm going to come back here maybe and talk a little bit more if there's interest about working with Power BI. I mean, that maybe we'll have a, a session just on that. So up here, I'm going to put TechSoup Connect, and today's date is April 20th, I think. So just so we know that we did that. And, but basically what I did is the same thing when I created this report. So I'm going to go back to the report and let that process. And we're back here. Now I'm going to refresh the data. Uh, since we've been on the session, we've had a few more forms completed. So let's see uh, what happens. So I'm going to do a refresh here. And I think we're going to see a few more responses. So there's 21 responses from 14 different people because the Beagles have been <laughs> playing around with the form and they've been submitting several responses. Okay. So I'm going to go through one layer. I'm going to loop back and maybe go through a few more details. Uh, so we created this, uh, these are visuals. This is a table visual. This is uh, a card visual. Typically a, it's a measure is placed in here or a number, like a count of something. And so I'm counting the number of responses here. I'm counting the number of people. These are uh, clustered column charts. And I just decided to create a column chart for each of the items in the form or the survey. And I hopefully use this color coding to, to just as a way to communicated in a way that's hopefully seems logical. The green is good. The red is what we want to pay attention to. And we're seeing here that where do we need the most attention well, in training and support. Okay. So again, these are all practice sample example, fictitious entries, but if we're taking it literally, that would, this is how we might find the report useful. Okay. And then we want to publish it so that typically with some things that we create using the forms and some visualization tool, we want to share it with other people. So I'm going to publish it into the Power BI service. And let's see, there we go. I'm, I could. In Power BI, I have the option of setting up different workspaces for this uh, demonstration. I'm going to use my workspace, which is free to anyone. So if you work at a nonprofit, if you have Microsoft 365, you do have the ability and option to connect to a Microsoft Power BI account, assume it's approved or made available by your IT administration. There's no cost for this. You can work with my workspace. Cost is incurred if you set up other workspaces or share outside of your own workspace. That's a common thing to do. For a nonprofit, the cost is uh, relatively low. In the United States, I believe the US dollar is $3.50 per user per month. Okay, so I'm going to click select. It's going to replace what's there. And now once you actually have your visuals set up, you don't have to do what I'm showing you here. 
we're going to, because that can be accomplished in the cloud without you having to manually do anything, which is nice. Okay. And the way that would work is in the Power BI service, I go down to the data sets associated with the data set is the collection of data sources that are used in the report. We have a relatively simple report. We're only using one data source. So the data source and the data set are kind of, you know, the same thing, but we could very well be relating different data sources and using them in various ways in the report, in which case they would be collected into a data set. Okay. So this is my screen for DI. I should be able to, it's right there. The ubiquitous ellipsis is that might be a good name for a rock band, maybe 20 years ago. I don't know now <laughs> so much, but okay. So I'm going to go into settings. All right. So here we are got to make sure generally this will be okay. If your credentials weren't okay, you'd get a warning in here. And I'd go into scheduled refresh. And so you can see with the Power BI Pro account that I have, it allows me to schedule eight time periods for refresh. So if I want to, if I think people are using this during daytime hours in my time zone, I could put it from a nine to five, or if I want to stagger it out across a broader area or broader time range, if I think people are going to be completing this, if I'm doing some work in the community and people are uh, completing it in evening hours, I could do that. So once you do that, when then it's set it and forget it. So let's go back to the report. Then whenever the time period occurs for the scheduled refresh, it will occur. And if you wished, you can check here. Now I did a manual refresh, but it's, it shows 1236. It, it will show the time of the refresh. Sometimes it might show 10 or 15 minutes after the hour you scheduled it for 3 PM by the time it actually is triggered and finishes, it might be 309. So it might say 309 PM. It's not going to happen maybe instantaneously, but it will happen depending on internet traffic and time of day, things like that. So that's really uh, wonderful. Now, what else can you do when you're here? Because let's consider that this is a really valuable report and I want to share it with the community. So what you can do is you can create the, an external shareable link. So I'm going to put that in here. And I think if you, someone would click on it again, tinyurl.com slash screen for DI. I'm going to put it in there. So if you like, and this should work on a mobile device on your computer. So I'm going to click on that and let's see. Okay. No typos. It looks like I got it right. And you can send this to WhatsApp. You could send it in a text message. You could send it in email. You could share it out to your community friends or your organization and they can see what's happening and that will update according to the scheduled refresh times that you selected. If you use it, you could have it refresh once a day. Yes, that's right, Sharon. You, you can, like, if I wanted to sort here, I could sort by any of these columns. And so it's dynamic. I can click here. Who said they had great internet? It's those people who said they had great internet. Okay. Who is saying that they would like to have training? It's those Denny. Okay. Yeah. We know Denny. He's got a reputation already. He just showed up <laughs> and he's already got a reputation. All right. 
and who wants some technical support or something for digital inclusion? Okay. So Denny has no need for support. He simply wants to sign up for the training. All right. So you can use it and, and you, with Power BI, there are many different visuals that you can create waffle charts, custom visuals, pie charts, line charts, area charts, uh, and so on. Okay. Now suppose it is sensitive information and you do not want to share it out to the community. You want to use it within your organization. Then you can have a, okay, so I'm, I'm in here and I can share it in here with my organization. I can copy that link. Okay. And of course, this is only going to work. I'll put it in the share area. There's nothing dangerous here, but I'm pretty confident that you're, if you click on it, you're not going to see anything. So Val, if depending on who's logged in, I can see it because I'm logged into the platform. So can someone please tell it me that it a license. Okay. That's it requires a license or something. Okay. So that's simply an example of if it was sensitive information, if it was protected health information that you might choose to do that. If you use various areas in a Microsoft 365 platform, you can connect the, you can embed the report into SharePoint online. You can put it in a website or portal that you could publish to the web which I did, the website or portal would require a login and a password. The SharePoint online would be your SharePoint, which would be mostly for organizational use. Yeah. So you can export the report to a PDF. Let's see how that works. You could do only, sometimes people say, I don't like hearing this, but they say, I want a paper copy. Okay. You could either, you could have multiple pages. You could say only export the current page. I'm going to do that. Take a few seconds. No, it's going to take more than a few seconds. I guess. So we'll give it uh, a little bit longer. It should pop up when it's done. You can share it into teams. There's also this incredible, I think this is artificial intelligence. Oh, let's see. Okay. So I'm going to open that in, and of course you could download the PDF file, save it as a PDF. You look at it in here. You could send this if someone wanted the, the PDF, there it is. Okay. It's not dynamic or interactive. You can't click on things in here to. And actually it might've been a more desirable choice if I sent this, this is probably the interesting one, but if you clicked on it, the PDF file is, does not have the dynamic interactive capability that you have when you share the link to this page and view it on your phone or tablet. Okay. Yeah. So let's see. The, so you can export it, you can download the PBIX file. Let's try something here though, that I, I didn't test this, this dangerous territory here. I want to see if something works that I have not tested. So let's see what happens. And hopefully it's a forgiving, friendly group that we have here. Suppose I wanted to see, can I create, uh, this report? without using Power BI desktop. So I think so. So how would you do that? All right. So I'm going to go down here into the lower left corner and say, I want to get my data. Okay. So I want to discover where the data is and 
I'm going to go, and the answer is yes, you can do this with Excel. Okay, so for example, if I click here and I say, get the file, and now I think we've got some nice options here. The file could be local, absolutely can get it if it's local files, if I click local, let's see if I go into my TechSoup Connect area. Did I, I'm not sure if I put it in here though. Well, if I had the Excel file, it, it would be in here and I could just connect it. You could put it on OneDrive for business, OneDrive personal. I like to use the SharePoint team sites. So let's see if we could find our data. Okay. Now, it is YTB is a rocket, right, Valerie? <laughs> dot SharePoint dot com slash sites slash YTBRN because I know that's my group. That's my SharePoint. Actually, it's the SharePoint that's assigned to the group. Now, it, this is like a trick question, almost unanswerable, unless you're the SharePoint Maven. How do you form a SharePoint group? There, there's like over 20 different ways to do it. And they're formed probably without me even knowing it, but you can create them through email, through Microsoft planner, through teams. You could just create a SharePoint platform. You can create it through Power BI workspaces. So that's not hard. So this looks familiar, shared documents. That's where I think I put it. Okay. Oh my goodness. It looks like we're close to a success story, maybe. All right. So I'm going to click connect now. So you can either import or connect. All right. Let's think about that. I don't like to think about that too much. I always like to select import it into Power BI. Now. If you do a lot of power query, power map, power visualization stuff in Excel, which I do not, you might prefer to make this or selection, but, but I never do that because I always want to work in the cloud. I never want to work inside Excel, but. I'm, I'm just saying that in it, 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 some people are super good with that. So of course they might choose that. All right. This looks like what we're talking about, right? Well, let's see what happens. Okay. And now it doesn't look like anything. So I want to do something with it. And here's where I can do something. Let's say I want to, I want to usually a lot of times I just want to get familiar with the data I'm working with. So I might put it in a table before I start doing something more graphically visual. And, and here you see, I have my data and this is the, the question, whoops, not that one. It was the support and training did you have internet what were my did you have a device what was the other question it was like four oh and apps that's right do you have apps to use okay so there you could see this coming together and then who is putting in where's because we're looking for denny he is our suspect here and so you see i can create the report that we were looking at before without using Power BI desktop. So that's nice to know when you're working with relatively simple data sources, typically one, if you have related data tables, unless they're in a database, because you could certainly connect that way. But if you have a, a series of different spreadsheets or different tabs, not sure if all of them will come in here, but try it out and see. And then I could make a copy of this. 
Okay. And then come over here and I could change maybe the visual I was working with. And let's see, and I just want to, let's see, I'm going to put in, cause I want something to do a count. So there you go. I'm, I'm putting in the information. Let's say I, I'll just, let's keep it simple. Who wants training? Okay. All right. So this is telling me how the results are coming in for the respond the respondees who want training. So let me point out something else though, so that you can see there, there are some things you can, many things actually that you can do on the desktop that you can't do here. Now, suppose I want to know what the, just a little more information. If I turn on the data labels it tells me, so let me do the math. That's 21. If I add those up, but what if I want a measure to tell me how many people responded? Well, I can do it. I can go in here. I can put that in there and it's telling me how many, so I could do what I had before. Now I, I want to know how many people, how many different people uh, participated in the survey. So I could take the names and initials. And I could select, tell me the distinct count. And that should give me the, what was it? 14. Okay. So I can do that, but I can't do anything more advanced than that. That would involve a formula, but if this is all I want, I'm in pretty good shape. Okay. So then I would save this and let's give it a name. This is tech soup connect April. 20th, I'm going to, uh, name, uh, so I'm going to put it in my workspace. I could put it in a different workspace. I could save it. And there it is. And if I look in here, I should see it in my, there it is right there. And if I want this one to refresh itself, can I find it in here? Let me see. I'm looking in my data sets. I don't see it in here. So that might be a limitation of, cause I typically work in the desktop. It's not uh, giving me an option to do the refresh. Oh no. Or, or is that it? Wait a second. Yep. There's too much going on in here. I've got my data sets and, oh, this. Oh, it's this one. Okay. Like I said, on this, I'm a little rusty on this. It actually is here. And did I, so it's this one here. That's the name of the data set. So if I go in here, since this is the first time I'm working with it, it's going to do, it'll refresh hourly. So that's pretty good that if I could take that literally, that means it would refresh 24 times a day. Didn't realize that. So huh, I'm glad I attended our session today because I learned something here. So that's, that might be, um, really valuable, really nice. And that's, so that's a pretty nice option to have. And you can like, why turn it off, keep it on and you can do quite a, there's you could spend a career with Power BI. We're just, you know, scratching the surface here, but we've only got a few more minutes left. So I just want to summarize some of the things that I hope, uh, you found, you found useful. Let me go back here. We created, if we didn't already have one, we chose to work with an office 365 group. And that's where we, if I was, let's say if I was in here. I went to forms. Okay. And I opened forms and I decided I wanted to create a form. I chose to go into one of my groups. You don't absolutely have to. That's, that's what I do. I might want to create a new one. You can copy one that you have and modify it, or you can create a new one and you have about a half dozen this is my new form. 
April 20th. And you can put a description in there and you can add your questions. You could be a choice question, ice cream or choice one or two. You can add options. You can allow for multiple answers. You can make it required. You can make it a drop down rather than the radio button. You can add branching. So there's some nice capabilities. Uh, you could add another question text that would be for name. You can add a rating, a five star rating, or something like that. You could put in a date. So let me just say that. Obviously, with the date, you can make it required or not. You can shift the position. You can put it up higher. It will collect the date of submittal. You may not need it. And then you can work with ranking and upvoting. I haven't used that a lot. You could do that. Okay. And then you can, you can preview it. You can preview how it's going to look on mobile. Okay. You have some themes that you can choose from, or you can upload a theme if you want a different color or a picture or the logo of your organization. You can collect responses. You can use a shorter URL here. You can allow anyone, only the organization or specific people in the organization. Okay. So I'm usually doing that. You could send it on email. You could get the QR code. Very cool. Or you can embed it in your website. So that's pretty nice stuff. And you can go back to your settings. You could print it, duplicate, collaborate, so on and so forth. And then you can connect. We are at our time. We, and then of course we went back to just the final points of we showed where to locate the spreadsheet for the form, Power BI, the connection. One last thing, if you like to work this way, if you like to work from within the SharePoint, you, you can do something like a form by, you could also work with SurveyMonkey, but you can go to forms for Excel and you can initiate it there. Your choice. It's a slightly different appearance, I think. April 20th test. And I like the interface. Now it's pretty much the same. It seemed like it, when we started from the forms, it gives you a little bit more like a description, uh, definition, but you can also initiate it that way. And then that's where you put it. Okay. We are at the top of the hour and this report is, should be on its way to refresh. It's probably going to take, we're not going to watch it and wait for it. We could watch grass grow. We could go to the airport and watch planes come in and, but that will update here a little bit after one. Was this useful to at least one person <laughs> and how did people do today is did did we do okay was i'm going to go back to we're going to have another session i haven't might have guest topics i'm not sure exactly what we're going to do it's probably going to be on may 18th you can register you'll see it if you're a member of TechSoup connect for time banking and community organizations. If you click on that, it will appear on here so that we have an upcoming event. So you'll see that on the next day or two or three or four, we'll have something. Thank you for participating in TechSoup Connect for time banking and community organizations. Thank you for your comments and questions. If anyone has an afterthought and you want to send in a message, you could send it to info at ytbrn.org. And it was a pleasure having this time with you. Thank you, Valerie, for your help on the chat and for being my YTB partner in Connecticut. Thank you to Jamaica, Uganda, Washington State, Canada. 
happened anywhere else, Florida, that people were joining us from. And please continue to participate with TechSoup Connect and hope to see you at another fun session with beagles and people in the, in the near future. Have a good breakfast, lunch, dinner, mid-afternoon snack, early evening cup of tea, or good night, uh, wherever you are. Okay. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for sharing uh, the time with us. Stopping the share. And Valerie, help me do a quick 10, 9, Ace. 8, 7, Seven. 6. Five, four, three, three two, and one. one. Bye. Bye. Bye.